You already know Shadowlands is all about cooldowns and damage stacking. And over the past few months, we've showed you what cooldowns you need to pay attention to in Arena. By now, your UI probably looks like a spaceship of weak auras. But wait, there's more! Today, we're going to show you where damage is coming from by going over some lesser known cooldowns in Arena. So get ready to open up weak auras as we show you what cooldowns you need to be respecting in Shadowlands Season 2. But before we get into it, we wanted to quickly remind you that we have over 600 exclusive guides on our website, skillcap.com slash wow. Now for prices as low as $4.99 a month, you can get instant access to all of our class courses and commentaries made by some of the best players in the world. We offer a money back guarantee, meaning you have nothing to lose. So check out skillcap.com slash wow today. Let's start things off by looking at mages with a new legendary that most players aren't even aware of. Ever since the nerf to Triune Ward in 915, many fire mages are using Disciplinary Command in 3v3. This legendary will give the mage a 20% crit damage buff after they cast all of their spell schools within a 10 second window. As fire, this is absolutely insane, since most of their damage is from crits anyway. And although the damage increase isn't nearly as much as combustion, the buff is enough to give them kill power even when their main offensive isn't available. It's not just fire using this legendary, and some frost mages might be playing it too. And frost mages also have their own set of threatening cooldowns you might not have been noticing, specifically deathborn and ice form. Ice form is definitely worth paying attention to since it makes the mage immune to stuns for its duration. It can be dispelled though, so counterplay is possible. Deathborn is the Necrolord Mage ability, and unlike Ice Form, it cannot be dispelled. If the mage is playing with a max level Gift of the Lich conduit, this effect can last for nearly 50 seconds. Fortunately, Deathborn is relatively easy to see, since it turns the mage into an obnoxiously large skeleton. In any case, if you see a Frost Mage with Ice Form, Deathborn, Disciplinary Command, and a Brain Freeze proc, get ready to buckle up for some huge damage. And speaking of huge damage, you might have had a rare encounter with an arcane mage this season. We've already showed you the power of Arcanosphere, which hurls a bowling ball of pain across the arena, but what we haven't really touched on too much is the arcane mage execute ability. Yes, even arcane mages have an execute if they are playing with the arcane bombardment legendary. Falling below 35% HP against an arcane mage with this legendary can spell disaster. Unfortunately, it can be relatively difficult to tell if they are playing with this legendary, but one indication is whether they have multiple shields. If they do, it means they are using Triune Ward. Otherwise, check for the Arcane Harmony legendary, which is a stacking buff that looks like this. If you don't see this buff, or if the mage only has one shield, then it's safe to assume they are running the Execute legendary. Unfortunately, there really isn't an easy counterplay besides staying at high HP, which of course is a lot to ask in Shadowlands Season 2. Moving on, we have everyone's favorite class, with some rogue specific buffs you need to pay attention to. Let's start off with Outlaw, which is seeing a massive rise in popularity since the last patch. If you played previous expansions, then you are already familiar with some of the things you need to look out for. For one, you should become somewhat familiar with Roll the Bones. This is a finishing move that gives the rogue 1, 2, or 5 random buffs. Now, you don't have to memorize all of these buffs, but if the rogue procs 2 or 5, then get ready for some damage, especially if they use adrenaline rush in the process. Assassination has its own set of smaller cooldowns that can be threatening outside of Vendetta. The first one is Shiv, which will give the rogue increased damage on Envenom, while also applying 40% healing reduction for 9 seconds. This is definitely worth paying attention to because you typically should avoid using massive healing spells into huge healing reduction debuffs. Sometimes it's unavoidable, but if you can manage to wait out its effect, then you will get more value out of your healing based CDs. And finally, if you have played against a sub rogue in Season 2, you're probably familiar with Echoing Reprimand at this point. If not, it's a Kyrian ability, and when paired with the Resounding Clarity Legendary, it gives the rogue a Guitar Hero set of combos for massive finishers. It is really easy to spot since it gives the rogue 4 identical buffs. One thing worth mentioning is that these buffs last a very long time, meaning you need to respect some setups even if the rogue doesn't have CDs. Moving on, we have two druid specific buffs you need to be paying attention to. If you are up against a balanced druid, there is a good chance they will be playing Kyrian, which means they have kindred spirits and are probably playing with the Kyrian affinity legendary. If they are playing with a necrolord partner, this will give them both 8% versatility all game, and with night fate partners it will give 8% haste. These numbers double every time kindred spirits is used, so this means increased passive damage all game and a considerable damage spike every minute when the ability is pressed. 
Feral Druids also have a noticeable damage increase with Feral Frenzy. Most people are used to reacting to Berserk, but most of their burst actually comes from this ability. With a relatively low cooldown, it can be really hard to trade into, which is one of the reasons why Jungle Cleave damage seems unhealable. There aren't that many immediate counterplays, but any effect that removes bleeds will cancel this effect. Next up, we have Warriors, with one key ability you really need to pay attention to. In past videos, we've stressed the importance of monitoring Warbreaker, and it's for a really good reason. With 30% damage increase and the ability to hit multiple targets, it's easily one of the most efficient damage cooldowns in the game. The best counterplay is any disarm effect since they typically line up with its cooldown. But chances are you don't have one on your team, which means you should consider trading defensives if Warbreaker is paired with other damage CDs, especially Avatar. Speaking of warriors, they usually play with Red Paladins, who apparently do a lot of damage. Of course, you already know about wings, but there are some other buffs you really need to look out for, specifically Seraphim and Aura of Reckoning. In most cases, when a paladin really wants to maximize damage in the opener, Seraphim will be used right before they pop wings. Then these two cooldowns will be combined with Divine Toll, potentially leading to a huge chunk of damage. But if you can manage to scout out Seraphim first, it can help you avoid the infamous Ret Paladin one-shot. But even when Wings and Seraphim are on cooldown, there's still the threat of Aura of Reckoning, which is a buff on the Paladin that procs a short duration Avenging Wrath after reaching 50 stacks. Good Ret Paladins will use this proc to line up damage with Divine Toll, so be sure to monitor the Ret's buffs and track Divine Toll even when their bigger CDs are down. Moving on, we have two Shadow Priest cooldowns you need to be respecting in the current meta. If you watch any high-rated gameplay, you probably hear pro players freak out about Psy Fiend. It's for a really good reason. Not only does it deal damage, but it also applies a healing reduction effect. Luckily, it can be killed, but it does have a decent amount of HP, so don't expect it to die in one global. And speaking of never dying in one global, Necrolord seems to be the covenant of choice across the board for Shadow Priest in Season 2. With that in mind, you really need to respect their covenant ability called Unholy Nova, which applies a huge dot called Unholy Transfusion. Most priests will pair this up with the Pallid Command Legendary, which summons a skeleton that does increasingly higher damage to targets affected by Unholy Transfusion. So what's the counterplay? Well, since Unholy Transfusion is a disease, it can be dispelled by a few specs, even some hybrid DPS. We highly recommend tracking the debuff on your party, especially if you are one of the select few that can remove diseases. By now, you might be wondering about Windwalker Monk damage, and we completely understand why. But in case you didn't know, there's definitely one thing worth looking out for in the current meta. It's Bone Dust Brew, which is the Necrolord exclusive ability. It causes every attack to have a chance to duplicate as shadow damage. With a one minute cooldown, it can be a bit more difficult to trade into, but some abilities like Cloak of Shadows or Hunter Fane Death Legendary can remove its effect entirely. And speaking of doing big damage, every Hunter spec has some abilities you definitely should look out for. It is a common misconception that Bestial Wrath is the only cooldown you should care about from BM Hunters. BM damage is already pretty consistently high, so the 25% increased damage is just a moderate increase. The more important ability to track is Flayed Shot, which is the Venthyr exclusive ability. It will give the Hunter random kill shot procs, which can hit for a substantial amount of HP. It isn't reliable to just look for the debuff on yourself, and instead, we suggest tracking its CD with Omnibar, in case the Hunter puts the debuff on a random pet in order to get huge damage procs. On the topic of huge damage, I'm sure by now you've played against a survival hunter and are wondering where a lot of their damage comes from. Well, it is also Flayed Shot, but the more important buff to track is Coordinated Assault. This buff gives the hunter 20% increased damage for 20 seconds, and when combined with Flayed Shot procs, it is potentially a lot of burst. And finally, we obviously need to go over some of the important Mark's Hunter buffs worth tracking in Season 2. You probably already know about True Shot from previous expansions, but what you might not be aware of is its interaction with Double Tap. Both of these cooldowns together give the Hunter a quick cast aim shot that will hit twice. On top of that, you should look out for Explosive Shot, which is on a much shorter cooldown, but is also worth respecting. The damage from this ability will happen after 3 seconds, but the debuff is dispellable. Since it has a short CD, it isn't nearly as important as True Shot or Double Tap, but is one thing you need to pay attention to, especially as a healer, so you can dispel the debuff. Moving on to a different type of hunter, DH also has some new technology you need to be aware of. You might have heard rumors of Necrolord DH by now, and even though they don't have the hunt, they are still able to do some huge damage. Their covenant ability is called Fodder to the Flame, which will summon a demon that they can instantly kill with Throw Glaive. 
Not only will this deal splash damage to everyone in range, but it will also heal the DH for 25% or more HP, depending on whether Metamorphosis is up. But perhaps the scariest part of this cooldown is that killing the demon will give the DH Shattered Souls, which is a 20% damage increase for 15 seconds. So even if the DH isn't playing Night Fae, they can still do massive damage during Shattered Souls and Metamorphosis, so don't sleep on them in Season 2. Next up, we've talked about Shaman cooldowns before, but they deserve a second look. Against Enhance, the most important cooldown to track is Doom Winds, which in short gives them a huge damage increase. Fortunately, this can be tracked easily by just paying attention to the Shaman's debuffs, since it will show the remaining cooldown based on the debuff timer in their frame. As for Elemental, both Echoing Shock and Stormkeeper are definitely worth paying attention to. Echoing Shock can be more difficult to play around, and it gives the Shaman some threatening damage even when Stormkeeper is down. As far as counterplay is concerned, you should be looking to dispel Flame Shock on the kill target as a healer if the Shaman has Echoing Shock up, since the Lava Burst damage can easily stack up. You might also need to check the Shaman's Maelstorm bar, since they can duplicate Earth Shock damage too if they have 60 or more Maelstorm. Moving on, we have all three Warlock specs with some nasty damage spells in Season 2. By now you probably know about Deathbolt Affliction Warlocks, but in case you don't, Deathbolt is a casted spell that causes all of the target's dot damage to be converted into one huge chunk of casted damage. With a 1 second cast time, it should seem easy enough to avoid, right? But when it is combined with Dark Soul and Power Infusion, it becomes really hard to interrupt. With that in mind, there are some things you should pay attention to if you want to know when the Warlock is about to launch Deathbolt. For one, you should look out for Dark Soul and Phantom Singularity, since they are one of the key parts of the burst sequence. You should also pay attention to dots. If the Warlock has a target fully dotted with Soul Rot up, damage might be coming. But if you're a healer, you can stop it before it happens by just pressing Dispel. If Deathbolt hits a target with zero dots, it will deal a whopping one damage. <laughs> Demo and Destro have their share of one-shot damage too. For Demo, most of it comes from Decimating Bolt. The spell might have a tooltip longer than a CVS receipt, and the TLDR is that once Decimating Bolt is cast, get ready for more damage. This Necrolord exclusive ability isn't that amazing on its own, but instead how it buffs their other spells like Demon Bolt and Incinerate. With the Shard of Annihilation legendary, Decimating Bolt will cause the next three casts to crit while also dealing increased damage. This is especially scary as demo since Demon Bolt can be instant cast with demonic core procs. In any case, if you see a Decimating Bolt cast, get ready for huge damage, especially against Demo Warlocks, who can hurl three instant cast bolts at you. And last, and certainly least, we have some Death Knight cooldowns you might want to consider tracking. Ironically, the most important Death Knight cooldown is Death Grip, since DKs arguably have the worst mobility in the entire game. Many DK comps focus the majority of their kill setups based on this one spell, since it opens up a limited window they have to freely attack targets. And if the DK is Frost, chances are it will be comboed with Blinding Sleep, and this will be comboed again with any stun the DK's team has. All in all, this is the bread and butter combo for most DK comps. Grip, Blinding Sleet, and Stun is what you should worry about the most. If you can manage to range or blink the grip, or if you can weave in a cooldown midair, that is usually your best chance at surviving before the stun combo happens. I'm sure now you are wondering, hey, I want to know more about how my comp can survive enemy cooldowns. Well, we got you covered at skillcap.com slash wow. Right now, for prices as low as $4.99 a month, you can get instant access to all of our site-exclusive commentaries. With over 600 videos, that is some insane value, and we are so confident in your results that we offer a full refund if you don't see the gains you're expecting. So don't delay. Check out skillcap.com slash wow today. Alright guys, that about wraps this one up. We hope you all have a wonderful new year and achieve all of your goals going into 2022. If you want to help support this channel, please consider subscribing. It really helps us out and it's only a mouse click away. As always though, thanks for watching. See you soon.